He might be big and he might be tall, but if he mess with me, he sure will fall. Hey, Fight fans. Welcome back to the greatest hits here on Boxing Legends TV. Today, we're happy to announce a huge milestone for our channel. Together, with the help of all of you guys, we've reached 100,000 subscribers, and we're so thankful for each and every time you guys have pressed that subscribe button. When we first started making videos for this channel over a year ago, we never in our dreams would have imagined that we would gain such a following. The comments and user ratings over the last few months have been overwhelming, and we really appreciate you guys so much. We thought this would be a good time to let you know what's to come on this channel in the future. First, we'll be continuing our Greatest Hits, Amazing Speed, and Power Series until we have finished each of your requests. Also, Top 10 lists will be more frequent as we notice these seem to be accumulating the highest average views for us and we only want to produce videos that our subs want to click on. New plans for the future include a possible new show every week, or Fortnite, to keep you guys up to date with all the latest fight news from around the world. We are currently searching for a potential host for the show and we'll keep you guys updated on the progression of that. Last but not least, we are considering producing some of our own boxing merchandise for you guys, such as hats, t-shirts, and hoodies. If that is something you'd be interested in, drop a comment down below to let us know. Without any further ado, we are dedicating our 100,000 special to no other than the main man himself, the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali turned pro on October 29, 1960 after winning a gold medal at the Summer Olympics in Rome. He faced off with Tony Hunsaker in his hometown of Louisville, Kentucky, and Muhammad displayed his impressive hand speed and footwork, winning a unanimous decision over six rounds. He begins his professional career on October 29, 1960. Tony Hunsaker is the first to fall victim to Clay's raw talent. May 19, 1962. Ali took on Billy Daniels, who had an undefeated record of 16 wins with no losses or draws. Ali had his hands down low as he danced and toyed with Daniels in the opening rounds. While dancing, Ali was also landing heavy shots that caused Daniels' eye to cut, and Ali stopped him soon after. November 15, 1962. Ali faced off with one of the greatest fighters of all time, Archie Moore. Moore is the longest reigning heavyweight champion of all time and also has the most knockouts of any professional fighter. But by this time, his 219th fight, he was completely past his prime. Nevertheless, this was only Ali's 16th bout and seemed a perfect step up in competition at the time. Moore pressing forward, trying to get in that one big punch to take Clay out of it. Ripping punches by Clay and Moore goes down. Cassius raises his hands over his head. Courageously, Archie gets to his feet. Ripping punches by Cassius Clay, and it's all over. Clay wins by a fourth round knockout, as predicted. June 18, 1963. Ollie ventured to the United Kingdom to take on Henry Cooper as a warm-up before he faced Sonny Liston for the world title. But Cooper refused to be used as a stepping stone and almost spoiled the party in round four. Late, and I believe that if Henry didn't cut so easy, uh, he would be a would have had a chance to be a champion. He'd shown a weak chin. He'd been knocked down. He hadn't shown great punching power. And because he had played the role of the clown for so long with his poetry and his mugging and his gimmickry, people were inclined to not take Cassius Clay seriously as a fighter. February 25th, 1964. Muhammad Ali finally got a shot against Sonny Liston for the world title. And what's going to happen What's going to happen? He might be great, but he'll fall in eight. He's driving a bus onto Sonny's lawn, and he's yelling, I want the bear. Get the bear out of here. Come on, bear. It was starting to get under Sonny's skin. Liston was a very dangerous man coming off back-to-back first-round knockout victories over the great Floyd Patterson. And after Ollie's lucky escape against Cooper, the media and bookmakers didn't give Ollie much of a chance to win. And that's got another one. Sonny Wobble. Sonny Wobble. 
Ollie started fast, so fast in fact, that Liston was shocked and couldn't find a response at all. After six one-sided rounds, Liston retired on his stool and Ollie shook up the world for the first time. May 25, 1965. Liston got his rematch against Muhammad Ali, which would become one of the most controversial fights of all time. Take a look at the infamous Phantom Punch and decide for yourself did it really land? The Phantom Punch. Did you see the punch? Did you see it? Was it the punch heard around the world? It wasn't even a punch seen around the world. The punch was hard enough to knock Liston down, but he thought Liston could have gotten up. It took about eight seconds after nine and ten that the crowd began to chant, fix, fix, fix. November 22, 1965. Ollie took on Floyd Patterson, who, since his first round of literation defeat suffered at the hands of Liston just two years prior, had strung a few good victories together, including Eddie Macon and George Trevallo. Ali would disable Patterson, then step back, admire his work, and then beat on him some more. Ali beats Patterson by technical knockout. November 14, 1966. Ali completed his trip around Europe, which saw him beat Henry Cooper more convincingly. He also took on Britain's number two heavyweight, Brian London, before venturing to Germany to beat the best they had to offer in Carl Middenberger. Returning to America, Ali would face the hard-hitting Cleveland Williams in a bout that most people felt was the performance of his career, and we are inclined to agree. Well, he looks like a dancer up there, with the way he pops and weaves. Well, you're the shepherd, comes in the left, the right, the left, 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 the
And upon Ali's return, there was only one fight the boxing world wanted to see. Come down and punch me. I got something for you. Okay, let's put, put all the talk and I'm gonna give the man the thing because I'm out to get you. Yeah, I see you jump, be good. His head's gonna be rocking all night, see? His head. Come on, gorilla, we in Manila. <laughs> I have a secret place I go to get ready for Joe Frazier. Every day I go to the zoo. <laughs> March 8th, 1971. Ali challenged Frazier for the first time for the heavyweight world championship at Madison Square Garden. Muhammad Ali in the red front, Joe Frazier. Dancing fast on the tassels on the shuffle shoes, twirling away. He picks his man off from a distance. And Clay looks out and says, he didn't hurt me. How can a man afford to do this? Here he is in the most important fight of his life. The opening rounds were close, with both men landing a similar amount of punches. But as the fight wore on, Ali appeared to be more fatigued than usual, and Frazier capitalized on that, scoring a wrongfully disallowed knockdown midway through the fight, and a very heavy knockdown in the 15th and final round. Oh, no! Left hook! Frazier's at last caught up with him. Tremendous left hook! Frazier's at last caught up with him. Tremendous left hook! When he knocks him down, he's not on his feet. Frazier is off his feet, maybe six inches off the ground. He had a lunge with, the, with his left hand. Frazier grins over Clay's shoulder, and he grins at his corner. It's over, and it's gone the distance. And Frazier gives him a contemptuous little pat on the head. After suffering his first loss, Ali would build himself back up to title contention once again by beating Floyd Patterson, Bob Foster, Ken Norton, and many other top heavyweight contenders of that time. But at the top of the division, there was one man that stood in Ali's way of greatness. A man so ruthless and powerful, he lifted men off their feet with his punches. Big George Foreman. Gosh. On October 30th, 1974, the fight that would be remembered as the Rumble in the Jungle took place in Zaire between the 40-0 undefeated George Foreman and the underdog challenger Muhammad Ali. During the fight, Ali would add rope dope to the lexicon and a great new chapter to his legend. Ali stands back, ties his man up, leans on the rope. To take that kind of punishment from a guy like George, you know, who knocked most guys out like they were rag dolls. I, I can't fathom taking those kind of blows from a guy who punches that hard. Those punches could crack ribs. I had predicted that Foreman was going to annihilate him. And in between rounds, when he started to wear George down, he said, hey, big fella, what do you think now? Not George out. Yeah. When Muhammad Ali put George down, he had proven that he is indeed the greatest. The great man has done it. How he beats for me. Humiliates. October 1st, 1975, Muhammad Ali faced off with his rival Joe Frazier for a third time. Both men had one win apiece, and this would be their final bout to decide who was the greater man. The 15-round fight took place in the Philippines and would be remembered by the title, The Thriller in Manila. A thriller and a chiller and a killer when I get the gorilla in Manila. And he must lose in the round I choose. <laughs> Ali, glove high, exaggerated himself. <laughs> and Ali pushed it on him because he heard him. Ali's intention was to knock him out in the first five rounds. He almost did. Ali had said he was going to come out and dance, but instead he stood in the center of the ring and went toe to toe with Joe Frazier for three brutal rounds. Then he started playing to the crowd. Away, broke out of a corner off the rope and knocked out Foreman. That's a good attack by Ali. Turns his bat. A big rally by Ali. 
Years of bad blood ensured that neither man was willing to yield. With only five rounds to go, the fight had become a contest of pure will. Fight to the finish between the two arch enemies. Beautiful. Straight left, followed up by the right. Combination punches. Heat. Round 14 and closes out seeing somebody come to killing somebody. He was very close to killing him. Very close. He was hitting him straight right hands with a left jab in front, open. We, we were dead, both of us. I was there. I'm fighting back, but I'm fighting out of instincts. Coming to the end of the round, there it is. And Frazier reels about the ring on top of legs. He doesn't know where he is or what he's doing. Is holding it off. It's all over, and Muhammad Ali at the end of the 14th round is a TKO now. He did it in the end, the hardest fight of his life. He is tough. He's a great fighter. I'm so tired, I don't want to do nothing. I want to rest for one week. Years later, Muhammad Ali said that if God ever called him to a holy war, he wanted Joe Frazier by his side. Before rolling the credits, we would just like to say, rest in peace to Muhammad Ali, the man that inspired me and millions of others around the world to challenge yourself in life and tackle your problems head on. He was more than just a boxer. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Until next time, Fight Fans, this is Boxing Legends TV, signing off.